Okay, good afternoon. Um, I'll be talking today about a real-time nonlinear vehicle dynamics uh, preview model or prediction model. So, <coughs> it's been, it's, we use it on an SUV, and um, SUVs are designed to be used on rough off-road conditions and also smoother roads. Um, now, the, a problem arises because you have suspension that has to cater for either one or the other, um, making SUVs more prone to roll over than any other type of vehicle. For example, in the USA, <coughs> of the total percentage of accidents due to rollover um, is 2.3 percent, where 33 percent of all fat uh, fatalities are due to rollover. So <coughs> these statistics um, have uh, it's, it's motivated researchers to develop different types of control system strategies to improve the handling of, of these vehicles, uh, which that basically you have input that goes into the control system, the decision is made, the output signal generated, it's sent to the actuators, where the actuators ha have a certain response time, and then it takes a little while for the vehicle dynamics to actually respond. Um, so if we could develop a preview model, we could take the inputs and move it forward in time. So in other words, instead of having it, it go in, we can predict what is going to happen and then use those to base, to, to use the control system. So the aim is then to develop a vehicle preview model and to implement it on one, one, uh, an existing strategy on a vehicle to see whether we can improve it. Um, so okay, so the, the vehicle preview model, it, makes, it has the following assumptions. It's a constant longitudinal speed. Uh, no aerodynamic forces. Um, it only considers the lateral load transfer. Um, it has a fixed sense of gravity position and constant steer rate for the entire preview time. <coughs> it uses the parameters on the left-hand side as inputs, where the preview time is a user-defined, you can say how, how far in the future you want to predict, and then it uses all of those to predict the parameters seen on the right-hand side. So this is an overview of the vehicle preview model. Um, it has the initial inputs and the final outputs, and it uses the Runga Kuta, Kuta method to solve it, to solve the, the model. I'll go into a little bit more detail on this later. So <coughs> the Runga Kuta solver, it, it uses the, the measured steer angle and the measured steer rate, and then to predict the future steer rate, so just one step at a time. So it's using time steps of H um, until our preview time tau has been reached. So <coughs> it uses all the current measured parameters with the next steer, steer angle, the predicted steer angle. So the, the tire sli side slip angles um, at each tire it uses the, the kinematics of the vehicle um, to work out the, the side slip angle at each tire. Then the suspension motion suspension motion, if we get back to the second uh, presentation this morning, it uses ideal gas and um, for, for the spring forces and then a lookup table for the damping forces. Um, in, the, in this, you'll see later, in this study, we were m more interested in the lateral motion of the vehicle. So f for this preview model, a s very simple ideal gas model w w was, was sufficient. Um, <coughs> then it, yeah, the, the load transfer works out the load transfer, so we know the vertical force at each tire, and then it uses the side slip angle and the vertical force then with just the uh, Pacheca magic formula to work out the lateral tire forces. Um, <coughs> the la lateral acceleration of the vehicle gets updated um, after each time step, and um, I'll quickly go through the differential equations then. So the equations are set up by taking the sum of the forces in the y direction, first equation seen on the, on the left, um, then uh, some of the moments about the z-axis and the sum of the moments about the x-axis. And then um, we use these equations to then set up the differential equations as seen on the right-hand side. So these are, this is the experimental validation of the preview model. This is for 200 milliseconds during a double lane change. Um, this was performed at about 70, 75 kilometers per hour. Um, <coughs> and yeah, 75 kilom uh, kilometers per hour is about the maximum that we can get the Land Rover to go through a double lane change without rolling, 75 to 80. 
Um, so you can see the side slip angle, the yaw rate, the roll rate, roll angle, and lateral acceleration. Now, you can see the roll rate is a little bit out. It's not as accurate, and that comes back to the accuracy of the suspension forces uh, with the, the friction, and um, there's a lot of unknown friction forces in, in, the, in the suspension that has a major effect on the dynamics of the vehicle. I'll get back to that one. So next, uh, we looked, if we assume an uh, acceptable coefficient of determination uh, higher than 0, 0,8, then these are the pr th this is how, how far the vehicle can predict, um, accurately predict the, the parameters on the left-hand side. So the lateral acceleration, for example, can be predicted up to 390 milliseconds. Um, the bottom shows the solving time. The model runs at 100 hertz, and if we predict up to 300 milliseconds, uh, it has a solving frequency of about 170 hertz, which means it solves faster, so it, it solves in real time. <coughs> okay, so after that, uh, Francho explained the, the voice for to you guys this morning. It's the suspension system that switches between handling and ride comfort. Um, and at the moment, it's controlled by a strategy called the running root mean square strategy. Um, and with the duration, this strategy has a time switching delay of about 300 milliseconds. So <coughs> at Girotech, at the dynamic handling track, we took the vehicle to test, to test the suspension, um, suspension switching. Uh, let me just quickly explain. So the running RMS uses the measured vertical acceleration and the measured lateral acceleration. It then compares the two to each other and then decides whether we should be in handling mode or in ride comfort mode. Um, so we get, we're getting rid of the delay by now using the measured vertical acceleration and the predicted lateral acceleration instead of the, the measured lateral acceleration. So this is for the dynamic handling track. At the top you can see the speed. Uh, the blue parameters are the measured ones and the red ones is, is the predicted parameters. So this is for 120 seconds ar around the lap. <coughs> we tested the vehicle um, going around the track with different suspension settings with in hard and soft handling and ride comfort and then also using the running RMS strategy, R RMS, which is the baseline. Um, we, we compared everything to, to this strategy. With 200 milliseconds, or let's look at, for example, with 300 milliseconds, the vehicle was in handling mode for 68% of the time compared to 65% of the time for the original. But even though it's only 3% more, there was a 22% improvement in the handling of the vehicle. So it can be seen by eliminating or reducing the switching delay from ride comfort to handling mode um, by just, it's in handling mode 3% more of the time. It switches a little bit earlier. We had an improvement of 22% in the handling of the vehicle. Uh, double lane changes were performed at 50, 60, 70, and 80 kilometers per hour. Um, the blue is 100 milliseconds preview, and green 200, and red 300. And it can be seen once again <coughs> during a double lane change with 300 milliseconds preview at 50 kilometers an hour, we had handling improvements of 56%. Um, so these are quite drastic improvements to the handling of the vehicle. Then we had to ensure that the vehicle that, that doesn't switch, that the suspension doesn't unnecessarily switch. Because we had some problems when driving around in city conditions. Um, as soon as you get below a certain point, because also the data uses, it's not filtered, it's the raw data that comes in, um, also to, to avoid any, any further delay. So we use the, the, the raw measured data, and um, we had problems at, a, at about under 10 kilometers an hour. Uh, there was a lot of noise in the data, and then the suspension was switching while you were standing still at a, at a traffic light or in, in traffic. So we just put in a speed limit at about 10, and it, if the vehicle is traveling below 10 ki kilometers per hour, and just leave it in, in, in the don't, don't do anything to the suspension. So this was in, in city conditions. This was in highway um, conditions. So once again, there's no spurious switching of the suspension. So in conclusion, the preview model was successfully developed and validated. Um, it solves fast enough with a good accuracy. Um, when using the preview model in combination with the uh, running RMS strategy, there was drastic improvements in the handling of the vehicle. Uh, also, no spurious switching of the suspension. 
then some of the future work would be to improve the suspension, the roll angle and the roll rate by improving the, the friction estimations and then create lookup tables for the suspension forces, etc., so we can uh, improve our solving time. Um, also, real-time center of gravity estimation would help because now we're making the assumption that by loading passengers or anything into the vehicle, it has no effect on the, on the vehicle dynamics where actually it has. And then yeah, to apply the, the preview model to other control methods to see if other methods could also be improved. Thank you. Any questions?